friends, I am Shivaji Bhaskar, Faculty of Russian at the School of Foreign Languages, IGNU. I welcome you all to this module of Communication Skills Part 1. As you know that in the previous sessions we have discussed about various roles of different concepts of Russian, especially like the voicing and devoicing of the consonants. Now in this module, we will be discussing about certain other concepts, especially of the possessive pronouns. As you are aware that we are also discussing about the different genders in the Russian language. We have also seen how the endings of the noun and adjectives are qualified. So here in this module, let's discuss these concepts once again with the help of few words and expressions. So here we are going to have a list of words like that you can see on the screen. The words are Zdies, Oshin, Nilsia and Jain. Here you can please pay attention how the pronunciation of these particular words are coming and how Udareni is being placed on the vowels. I am going to repeat the words again and we will also be knowing their meaning in English. Zdies, Oshin, Nilzia and Jain. Zdies means here, Oshin means autumn, Nilzia means it is important, Nilzia means it is impossible and Jain means day. Now let us go to the next part. Here we are going to discuss a few combinations of consonants and vowel sounds. We will also be seeing that how vowel and consonant sounds are joined together and what kind of sound pattern we get. As you can see here we are going to have letter Ch and as you already know there are certain vowels like A, O, U, E etc. So now listen to the sound of these letters one by one. Cha, Cho, Chu, Chi, Ach, Och, Uch, Ich. Here you can see the difference between these sounds, especially when we are not looking at the screen but only listening to these sounds. So, I would like to recommend to you all to listen to these sounds carefully and then note them down separately and when combined together in your notebooks. Alright, now let us go to the next part. Here we will see certain examples where we will find new words and expressions. As you all already know that in Russian we have discussed about certain endings which we found in the adjectives and noun. However, it is the noun which decides the ending of the adjective. So let us pay attention to these words and expressions first. Chorni, Dobri Vecher, Chisi, Achki, Chitach, Atvichach and Uchich. So if you pay attention to the first one, Chorni, it is an adjective. Why? Because it has the ending of U and E kratki. It means black. The next one is an expression which we are oftenly use in Russian is Dobri Vecher, which means good evening. Then we have Chisi, which means watch or clock. 
then achki means glasses or spectacles then now we will be discussing with you about certain verbs because it is the verb which plays a very significant role in any sentence in order to give clear meaning so the first verb here we are going to read is chipach here you can see the ending of the verb as ta and soft sign chitach means to read and as you know that in russian these verbs are being conjugated in the form of ya ti on ana anu mui vi and ani so i am going to conjugate the verb for you so that you have a fair idea about how these verbs are being conjugated in russian chitach means to read ya chitayu means i read ti chitaish means you read it's in singular then on ana ano chitayet on chitayet means he reads ana chitayet means she reads and ano it's for it then we have mui mui chitayam we read and then you have vui chitayche which means you read it's in plural and then ani which means they ani chitayu they read so likewise depending upon the ending of the verb you can conjugate with a set pattern but there are some cases some exceptions in russian as well where you will find sir, similar endings but the verbs are not conjugated like that we will be having a separate list of such verbs in our upcoming modules but till the time being we will only discuss these basic verbs in this module then the next verb we have is atvechaich atvechaich means to answer it is from the word atviet which means answer then we have uchich it is also a verb which means to study so i would like to request you all to note down any special thing or any special concept which you think it is important as well as all the words verbs and expressions which we are dealing now let's go to the next section in this part you will see there are certain words which we oftenly use in our day to day communication and as we you know that we want you to use these words as well in your day to day communication you can make your own small sentences and use these words so the new words are chai chas uchyabnik uchyech Kluich, vraj. So these are the new words where you have these kind of concepts where you can use these new words. But before that, we will know their meaning. So the first word is chai. As it sounds, it's very popular. It's tea. and if you remember in our previous modules we have discussed that in russian chai means tea but if you want to say black tea or tea with milk you have separate expressions so chai bis malaka means black tea and chai is malakom means tea with milk you also say zelyony chai for green tea the next word is chas means hour and in russian we use an expression katori chas which means what is the time you can also use this expression with your family and friends and then when we will be discussing time in a specific case of russian we will tell you more about how to count numbers time etc then the word is uchebnik 
means textbook uchicha means teacher kluch means key and vrach means doctor all right now let's go to the next part here again you can see some of the new words which you can also use in your own sentences construction the words are chilavyak chitvirg vecher malchik chainik now let's learn the meaning of these words chilavyak means person chitvirg means thursday vecher means evening malchik means boy and chainik means kettle here in this part you can also see that we have used the word chitvirg which means thursday and likewise in russian you will also be learning about days of the week as we have seven days in a week in russian we start from ponedelnik which means monday vtornik means tuesday srida means wednesday then you have chitvirg which you can see here also is thursday then we have pyatnitsa means friday subota which means saturday and then we have vaskrisenye means sunday so you can also learn all these days of the week in advance and you can also use certain other words while making sentences however we will also be talking about certain cases of russian where you know how to construct a specific sentence in a specific case so that you will always be using all these words in your day to day communication all right now let's go ahead and pay attention to these new words the words are chasta sichas chista ochen vchera vechra and kanyeshna so now let's learn the meaning of these new words chasta means often sichas means now chista means clean ochen means very vchera means yesterday vechram means in the evening and the last one is kanyeshna which means of course so you can also use these new words in your own communication you can also see that there are some of the words which we use very often especially the first word itself is often which means chasta sichas means now and vechram kanyeshna ochin these are very often used words in russian so i would like to suggest you all to note them down and use in your own sentences and then you can communicate with your family and friends all right now let's go to the next part here you can see these new words as you can see most of the words however new but you have a fair idea about the ending of the nouns now so if you remember the word which ends with a belongs to of course it's feminine gender so the word chashka which means cup is of feminine gender so suppose if i want to make a small sentence eta chista ya chas so when i'm saying this sentence eta chista ya chashka so i am saying that this is a clean cup or suppose if i want to say it is a big cup then i have to say eta balshaya chashka so the ending of the noun chashka is determining the ending of the adjective balshaya likewise we have more examples with us like noch doch ruchka pochta jevachka and then we have pachimu which is very often used because every question will start from pachimu only because it means why then we have an expression ochn priyatna so if you remember in the previous module we have discussed about ochn priyatna pazna komitsas so it is very nice pleasant to meet you 
you can also make your own sentences however before that let's learn the meaning of these new words first so chashka we already know means cup noch means night doch means daughter ruchka means pen pochta means post office jevachka means little girl pachimu means why and ochin priyatna we know means very nice all right now let's go ahead and pay attention to the sounds here these are the sounds a combination of course of a consonant and a vowel and then a vowel and a consonant the letter which we are going to use here is sh so please pay attention to the sound of these combinations and i would also like to recommend that even without looking at the screen if you can identify the sound separately or joined together then it would help you further in making your own good word sentences expressions and you will be able to identify precisely any sound of the russian language so now i'm going to tell you about these combinations let's start with sha shu shi ash ush ish here you can see that whenever we are having a combination of a consonant and a vowel sounds are different as well as when we are changing into a vowel and a consonant sound the sounds are absolutely changed for example like sha and the opposite of sha is ash sha ash shu ush she ish so like that you can also have your own exercises in a different manner so that you can also understand different type of tones and texture of russian with such exercises okay now let's go ahead and pay attention to the new constructions here we have sha sha ash sha shi ash sho 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 osh osh shu 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 ush ush shi 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 so it is quite you know difficult in order to identify the sound of sha or sha however when they are joined with some other vowels but when they are pronounced individually i think our learners they can identify their sounds very easily sha sha but our main purpose is that that even if when they are joined together not only identifying them clearly is the purpose but if such sounds are occurring in any kind of word then you also need to be ready to identify them and for which you need to practice these kind of exercises very oftenly all right now let's go ahead and pay attention to the next part here you can see we have combination of vowel consonants and consonants and vowels here we are going to use s ya sha and a then we have sha a and s and ya so sya sha sha sya syo 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 syu shu shu syu si shi she see all right here you can see that how the tone and texture every time whenever we are having a combination of a consonant on a vowel or vowel or a consonant the tone and texture is changing now let's go to the next part and pay attention to the some of the words which we are going to use here they are also very important in order to understand the cultural aspect of russia the first example is of course is borsh if you travel to russia 
you will find this particular soup very prominently available everywhere each and every corner of the country it is basically a russian beetroot soup and soup is soup in russian but particularly borscht is a russian beetroot soup then we have plash shi zhenshina ploshaj apsha zhiche and vapshi zhiche so now let's learn the meaning of these words again borscht you already know then we have plash means raincoat then we have she she is again another very very famous type of soup in russian so you can also remember this note it down zhenshina means woman ploshaj means square and krasna ploshaj we have included for your information because it is also very important a very prominent square in moscow which is known as the red square so you can also remember this that krasna ploshaj or the red square which is a prominent spot in middle of the moscow city the next one is apshajitya means hostel and apshajitya means in the hostel you will be learning about such constructions where we are going to use prepositions like in this case v apshajitya means in the hostel so when we are making sentences with the help of prepositions we will be using two kind of prepositions primarily v means in and na means at okay now let's go to the next part so here for the convenience of our learners we are going to have some activities so please pay attention to the words and sentences in this activity number 1 Eta vaše apše žiče. So when I am asking a question, as you can see, the sound pitch is going higher at the end. Eta vaše apše žiče. Da. Eta naše apše žiče. I am answering with the help of da, and then I am having a pause and completing the answer. Da. Eta naše apše žiče. Then vaš druh tože živiot vaše žiče. again question so the pattern of the sound is going higher at the end then i am answering da moy druk to je živiot v obshijiche with the help of da i am answering da moy druk to je živiot v obshijiche so these are the constructions where you will see where we are using preposition v that is why when the person is asking a question Eta vaše obshijiche is this your hostel then i'm answering the eta naše obshijiche yes this is our hostel then the person is asking a question vaš druh tože živiot v obshijiche vaš druh tože živiot is your friend also lives in the hostel then i'm saying answering with the help of da yes moy druh тоже живёт в общежитии. Yes, my friend also lives in the hostel. Here what do we see? We see a particular verb which is defining that my friend lives in the hostel. So the verb is rich. Rich can be conjugated in this form. That is why друг and drug as we know is friend masculine gender so we have conjugated rich into on živiot moy drug živiot and whenever we are having as you know that in this particular sentence we have a verb which defines that the friend lives in the hostel So for verb to live we have verb here zhit and as you know that in russian we conjugate the verb and here we are conjugating the verb for druk which means friend masculine gender so we have changed the verb zhit as per the masculine gender on 
or drug zhivyot. And then here you can see the use of preposition. V. Whenever we are asking the question, gijie means where, then we have to use the same construction. Gijie zhivyot. In this case, gijie zhivyot moi drug. Where does my friend live? Then I have to answer. My friend lives in the hostel. Moi drug zhivyot vapshi zhiti. All right. So please keep this basic concept in your mind clearly in order to make more constructions like this, where you will be needing constructions of prepositional case. Now, let's look at this second construction. Это красная площадь. So, what do we understand from that? First thing, of course, it is a question. The sound is going higher at the end. Then, площадь means square. And since you have no a or ya ending at the end, but it belongs to feminine gender, that is why the adjective ending is красная. So, there are certain exceptions in Russian where you also need to remember them and as a concept some of the cases you will see that soft sign being used at the end these nouns belongs to the feminine gender but not necessarily always so exceptions we will be having a separate list where you can talk about such kind of words now let's go ahead the answer the person is going to make in the previous part is Da, it is a красная площадь, and as I can understand that you must be learning it properly. That whenever we are answering with the help of da, we are using da, pause, and flat sound. It is a красная площадь. Then the next question: Ваш друг знает где красная площадь? Then I am answering: Нет. Мой друг не знает, где красная площадь. So, the person is asking, ваш друг знает, does your friend know, где красная площадь? Where is the red square? And instead of да, I am going to use another expression, нет, which means no. Нет, мой друг не знает. Где красная площадь? My friend does not know where is the red square. So here you can see that instead of the, we have used нет for the first time, and as well as you can also make your own sentences where you can use the expression of нет. However, the concept remains same that after the or near, you have to have a pause. All right, now let's go to the third section. In this, we have certain sentences. Student читает новый текст еще раз. The student reads the new text once again. And in Russian, as you know, for student, if it is a male, we have the word student. Whereas if you have a female student, it will be called studentka. So we will be discussing about such more concepts in our upcoming modules. I hope that you like this module, and we will be discussing about certain other constructions of Russian, especially with the case called prepositional case in our next module. Thank you.